<laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Hujuana and welcome back to Space Talk. As it is very nearly Halloween, today's video is going to be all about the spookiest ships in sci-fi, at least in my opinion. You are entirely free to have your own favourite spooky ships and I'd love to hear what they are, so slam them into the comments below while telling me how wrong my opinions are. Now, it is true that really any spaceship can be rendered somewhat spooky through the simple measure of turning off the lights and adding in scary monster sounds. But some ships go beyond that. They create an environment that is actively hostile or is visually unpleasant and unsettling to be inside of. Though sometimes all they do is put a slight twist on more classically spooky feelings rather than going all out on being horrible, which is what the USS Cygnus from the Black Hole does, and why it is my fifth place spookiest ship. The Black Hole is over 40 years old and isn't exactly a popular film. It's a bit middling overall, but does have its moments. The USS Cygnus itself is the main location for the film, a vast exploration ship captained by Dr. Hans Reinhardt, a brilliant scientist with a flair for the dramatic. It was presumed lost many years ago, so the heroes of the film aboard their own ship are very surprised to see it, especially as it is holding station near a black hole. Eventually things go horribly wrong. Plot occurs, explosions happen, asteroids impact the ship, that sort of thing. But why is this a spooky ship? Spooky can mean a lot of things, and I think the Cygnus fits a tamer, more quaint style of spookums. Something more like the Adams Family, but dressed up in science fiction with robots and laser beams. It's a haunted house theme park ride, a child-friendly roller coaster through various rooms with some mild peril for our characters to go through. There's big zappy Tesla coil experiments, there's mindless drone automatons, there's a scary evil robot henchman, and there's the ever-present threat of falling down into the terror outside. The ship is essentially the massive, resplendent home of a mad scientist who did terrible things to his housekeepers. He's doing world-changing experiments while perched dangerously on the side of a volcano's caldera, and predictably, things do not end well for him. My fourth favourite spooky ship is the Elysium from Pandorum. This is by far the largest ship on this list, as while there isn't an official total length, it is clearly gargantuan in scale, befitting its role as a colony ship. It carries the people and equipment needed to set humanity up on the only habitable world so far discovered, as Earth itself is becoming non-viable due to overpopulation. Externally, the ship design in the setting is very unique, as both the Elysium and another ship shown have very organic forms, with bulges, horns, spiny antennae, and strange rotating segments. I love this style, it's certainly something different, and the weirdness, the unsettling unfamiliarity, suits the tone of the film to a T. Internally, it's largely the standard spooky sci-fi fare. It's not all like that though, there are some fun touches that make the ship and setting stand out a bit, like the font in use across the ship, or these wind-up power generation thingies on the ship's consoles. How cool is that? Such a nice idea, some basic thing that allows the use of computer terminals for plot, and keeping the audience informed on what is going on, while keeping most of the ship blanketed in darkness. It doesn't always stay that way though, as occasionally there are these terrifying power surges. These feel like massive seismic events, and are the main driver for the film's protagonist as they signal the coming reactor overload. While most of the interior is boilerplate space industrial, hey look, a sci-fi door! Here and there is the continuation of the organic feeling from outside. This only happens in a few spots though, and can be pretty subtle, like the black squishy hoses that run through some conduits, or the shape of some pipes in the depths of the ship. It's still there though, and along with the sense of claustrophobia and of age and decay, it occasionally feels like being in the bowels of some vast living being. I love it. It reminds me a lot of the real-world technology in the Matrix films. In general, if it reminds me of the Matrix, I'm going to like it. Oh no, I've said the word. That means I'm going to do a like and subscribe integration. Oh, I just did it. We can move on. In third place is the Event Horizon, a research vessel named for the artificial black hole its gravity drive creates to enable faster than light travel. It went missing when this drive was first activated, but has mysteriously reappeared in low orbit around Neptune. The film follows the crew of the Lewis and Clark, a somewhat uninspired rescue ship. The only standout part of the Lewis and Clark is the captain's chair that seems to have a mind of its own. It reminds me of the one from Team America. The horizon is supposed to be cathedral inspired, but from the outside I don't really see it, beyond its overall cruciform shape. Internally though, the forward crew section is very much in this style, with vaulted ceilings made from metal block thingies, and there's even wall sconces for lighting. It's all very moody and closed in. Combined with the angry atmosphere of Neptune outside, it's very blatant about feeling like being stuck within a castle on a dark and stormy night. 
While the vaulted chambers in the crew section are somewhat disconcerting, the gravity drive in the engineering section at the opposite end of the ship is really what makes the Event Horizon scary. Beyond the extremely normal looking, completely standard corridor through its magnetic containment system lies the drive core, this weird gyroscopic thing in the middle of a spiky room. Everything in here is ritualistically ornamented in a way that screams, this ain't right, and there's even space dock logos on the floor, the true mark of evil. Overall, in terms of concept, the antagonistic force on the Invent Horizon is probably the most terrifying out of all the ships I'm talking about, as it is supernatural in origin. It is not a real, tangible thing. It instead manifests in visual and auditory hallucinations, or in possession. There's not much you can really fight back against or truly escape. And the characters realised it, leading to the single most sensible line ever uttered in any horror film. We're leaving. And yes, there's the Warhammer 40k warp thing. The use of Latin, the Roman numerals, the general gothic vibe of the ship is all very imperial, so imagining this as a prequel film to 40k is a fun little idea. My second favourite spooky ship is by far the most influential one on this list. Having practically defined space horror as a genre, it is of course the glorious USCSS Nostromo from Alien. Where do I even begin with this? The space trucker cassette futurism aesthetic? Though I suppose it wasn't really cassette futurism back then, just regular futurism. It's not really a spooky part of the ship, but I feel that safe zone element for characters to retreat to when they need it is vital to maintaining how scary the rest of the ship is. That dark and industrial underbelly with a million places for a cat to hide before jump scaring everyone. Those wet, dirty, grimy landing gear chambers that no one visits so no one really knows if that lumpy thing is supposed to be there or not. It's just the perfect place for this film to be set in. Everywhere is awful and disgusting because it's a working industrial ship and that's just what it's meant to be like. Everywhere is the perfect hiding place for the Xenomorph. So many future ships and space horror films took their cue from Alien and the Nostromo. Its influence is everywhere, from the other ships on this list, to prequels made decades later, to things in completely different genres. It's just a gorgeous, iconic ship. And yeah, it has visible antennas, which of course, I love. So if the Nostromo is so great, why isn't it my favourite? You'll have to wait and see until after this honourable mention of the Collector Vessel from Mass Effect 2. I know it's not really that spooky overall, but it does hit those vibes more than most other things in the franchise. It's the first time you visit any Collector anything on their home turf, and it is completely empty when you first step foot there, for little apparent reason. You wander through the hallways uncovering dark and ancient secrets, and then all hell breaks loose when everything wakes up and you start being attacked. A similar place in the same game is the Dead Reaper in the depths of the atmosphere of Menemesini, which is even more atmospheric, but I prefer the collector ship because of the story beats there. Mirror, mirror on the wall, what is the spookiest spaceship of them all? The USG Ishimura from Dead Space, a mining ship that processes huge chunks of planetary material that had a bit of an incident. How could it not be the Ishimura? It takes the industrial spooky horror ship concept and perfects it. The dark and dreary corridors with wild lighting, the crew sections filled with candles from cult worship, the loud and oppressive industrial machinery, it's all just incredible. The design language of the ship is just gorgeous, with these hard, angular, skeletal shapes everywhere. Combined with the inconsistent lighting, they make these crazy shadows and dark shapes in the corner of your eye that keeps you on your toes. It is not a comfortable place to be in, it is a working ship at the best of times, let alone when it's filled with the transformed, animated bodies of its former crew. Even the sounds the ship makes are terrifying as you wander around fixing things up. They have an inhuman quality to them that goes beyond the usual impersonal danger inherent in any large industrial equipment. However, I do think the Ishimura has an unfair advantage over the other ships I talked about today though, as you are within it for a lot longer. Films are only a couple of hours long, while in Dead Space you can spend that length of time exploring just one section of the ship, and there are many sections, each with their own feel to them. The most spookiest trip through it takes place in the sequel, as you return to the bowels of the ship after it was recovered and somewhat patched up. Going back through the places from the first game after they have been sanitised is amazing. There's tons of tension here and the odd jump scare, and it's incredibly atmospheric. It's so good, and a big reason why it's my number one spooky spaceship. Thanks for watching this video on my top 5 spooky ships. If you wish to financially support Space Dock, you can become a YouTube channel member, give us super thanks, or join our Patreon. 
Thank you for supporting if you have already, and I'll see you next time. Bye.